is we were only supposed to open in five cities, which was a big deal for us, and we just heard that we're opening in 42 cities. So, so, I wanted to thank Justin from ISC for kicking so much butt in doing that. Um, she was an amazing subject for us, and we, um, yeah, we just hope people like it. Thanks a lot. I'm singer. Please join me in welcoming to the stage the incredible Kathleen Hanna. Thank you so much for sharing your story and for sharing so much with all of us. I'm sure that this is a room full of people like myself that just want to tell you a hundred stories about how your music changed our lives and how much you mean to us. So thank you on behalf of everyone. <laughs> You're welcome. Super fan. It's so nice to be told things like that and not just like, you know, I really love the guitar sound and that <laughs> eighth verse of your 16 minute long song. <laughs> So I really appreciate everybody, um, you know, coming out. It's like Saturday night, right? Yeah. yeah. You guys uh, shared your Saturday night with us. Thanks. Before I take questions from the audience, I would love to know, how does it feel to have your story like that live for everyone? Um, wow. I guess it feels super weird because now I feel like you guys all know me so much better than... Maybe you don't. Maybe you already knew everything in the movie before it happened. I don't know. but. Um, it feels weird. I really watch it like watching a character in a movie rather than it's me. Because I feel, it's like I'm standing here on stage talking to you. I'm not in the seat looking at me. So I'm, I'm reading the situation from this perspective. And I'll always feel it from this perspective. Even if I saw a video of the, from the audience. Does that make sense? Because the real thing was me on stage. So when I see footage of me on stage, I remember being at that show being on stage, looking at the audience. So it's weird when I watch it, I feel a little bit um, disconnected from it, like it's not really me. Maybe I need therapy, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. That 11 years was not enough. I was wondering, what do we say to people who are 17, 18, which is our age, when they say, oh, I'm not a feminist because feminists hate men and burn brows. Ew, I'm not a feminist. What are you? you? <laughs> I mean, I've always felt like people can call themselves whatever they want, that, that's, that the language isn't the most important thing in the world. And my friend Tammy Ray Carlin, who was in the movie, um, said it really well when she said that feminism is a verb. Um, it's something you do, it's not something you are. And I mean, I guess my advice would just be to, you know, talk to people and ask them, do they believe in equal rights for all people? Do they want to end oppression in general? Not just, you know, against women, but I feel like feminism is a starting point for ending all oppression, and sh at least it should be, at least the kind I want to be involved in. And um, maybe if you start to talk to them about that, or play some cool music for them, <laughs> or whatever, you know, but like try to keep the conversation open, and if you have friends, maybe right here, who are interested, it's like, that might be just enough. You know what I mean? I'm sure you're like the coolest girls at your school. <laughs> Everyone's gonna follow everything you do eventually anyway. It be six months. When you first uh, started to do music again after your diagnosis, I was just curious, what was it that got you starting to write that first album? It was, I always had the thing of there's the first Julie Rune and the song, there's a song actually from that record that was playing at the end of the film. And um, I always had it in my head that I had to make one more of those records, but because I always considered those songs kind of like um, sketches, but not fully drawn. And I always wanted to finish the picture with a full band. And um, that's actually how Lady Tigris started, was we were trying to start reviving that project and playing that project live, and it never happened. Then Lady Tigris just sort of became this whole huge part of my life. And then I got sick, and I was like, I have to make that happen. Um, so it became one of those Oh God, I don't want to say bucket list. I don't want to say it, I just said it, it's too late, I said it. It became like a bucket list type thing where I had to do it and even though I was really sick, my band was really cool and they would wait for a well day to practice and to write. And the whole album, I did the singing mostly at home. Um, I would, you know, be sick in bed for two weeks and then I'd have three days 
Um, and I would just, you know, drink a bunch of coffee and just sing as much as I possibly could for the over those three days and drive my neighbors crazy. And um, yeah, it gave me a lot of hope because I had a reason to get better was to finish this record. So I was wondering. I feel like every time I turn on the radio and I have two, a daughter who's uh, 12 and one who's eight, like it's still just like insidious, sexist messages constantly. And every time you turn on the TV and all the stupid Netflix stuff they want to watch, and so I feel like an asshole all the time because I'm like, turn that shit off, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Why don't I, and I'm a musician, I'm like, why don't you listen to my music? And I'm like, mom, we don't listen to your music, you know? And so I just wondered if you have any ideas like to not be like an asshole and have your kids like hate your guts because you're such like a, a jerk. You don't, like, you don't want to listen to anything or watch anything because you're just like, this is turning you into like an American like monster. <laughs> this is the best Q&A ever. <laughs> not only have we met one female comedian, we have definitely met two. Um, these girls are studying in the front row and are gonna go back to their school and do comedy. Um, that was such a great way to ask a question. Thank you. I don't really know what, I don't have like daughters or anything. Um, so I don't really know, like I can't, I'm not a parent advice expert, but I do have a friend who wrote a parenting book. <laughs> so I'm like thinking about what she said and she has a boy and you know, at first she was really freaked out that he wanted to play with like toy guns and all this kind of stuff. And, um, then she was just like, what am I gonna do if I hold this back from him? He's gonna go over to his friend's house and do do it and feel like it's this like secret, you know, like porn thing. I can't stop thinking about porn. Okay, he's he's gonna like think it's like this taboo thing that's super exciting and you don't wanna set it up like that and da da da. I just think that if you give your kids strong values and you talk to your kids about like, you know, that racism exists in the world, that sexism exists in the world, that homophobia exists in the world, and that there's age appropriate ways to do that, that they'll be able to the same way that, you know, when I became a feminist and everything I saw started enraging me um, in my like, you know, feminist 101 kind of thing, like where I just hated men so badly. Um, I know that sounds awful, but whatever. Uh, it's the stereotype, it's true for moments in time. But um, I just think that they'll look at it through the lens that you've given to them. You know, and that, that they'll be able to handle that and they'll be like, wait, why is it that Ariel has to lose her voice in order to gain, you know, what she wants? You know, the Little Mermaid. Um, people probably don't even watch that anymore. It's like totally like from 20 years ago. But that was a great question. I'm sorry I said I hate men. <laughs> so when we showed up in DC, which is a very politicized scene, and we played DC Space, um, and everybody was like, we've been waiting for you. They just seriously were like, oh, we've been waiting for the feminist band to show up. They're, they're, thank God, here you are, you know, like, and I thought that it was a trick. I don't know if this was in the movie or not, but Ian Mackay came up to us after the show, came up to me and was like, I want to record your band, you know, like I think you guys are fucking great. I'll take you to this nice studio called Inner Ear where, you know, we record all the Discord bands, we'll record you for free. And I was just like, yeah, whatever, dude, you know. <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't recognize him, I was like, I had listened to reggae in high school. I didn't know like who Minor Threat or Fugazi was at that particular moment. Um, and so my bandmates were like, that was even Kai, what did he say to you? And I was like, that freak? He wanted to, like, I thought he was gonna take us in the woods and like kill us. Like, I didn't know. Thank you so much, Kathleen. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you for coming.